Hi everyone, my name is Konita Hunter. I'm a political journalist at the Sunday Times. Now, 2018 was a very, very eventful political year. It started off um, with former President Jacob Zuma being removed from office and incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa being elected. Now, it's been almost 10 months since Cyril Ramaphosa has been in office. And there's a lot of things that he has done. But at the same time, there are a few things that he hasn't done. When Cyril Ramaphosa came to office, he made many promises. In his State of the Nation address in February, he spoke about fixing state-owned enterprises, fixing government really, and more importantly, fixing the economy. Now, when it comes to state-owned enterprises, there has been a lot of work done to fix and to sort out the mess that was left behind by state capture. There's been new boards appointed in many of these state-owned enterprises. There's new executives appointed to, um, you know, the ESCOM and Transnet, etc. There's also been disciplinary action uh, taken against people who were implicated in state capture. Part of his efforts to secure investment in South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa hosted an investment conference and that conference was aimed at getting people, big business um, from all over the world to come to South Africa to see what South Africa has to offer and then to pledge uh, investments in this country. It was highly successful. People rated South Africa really well and there was a sense of optimism um, for the economy purely in the fact that there is some sort of policy certainty. Ramaphosa and his administration also put together a stimulus package which is aimed at stimulating the economy and putting certain things in place. The tourism sector was identified as a sector that needs to be um, you know, boosted and there were obviously measures that were put in place there. But the challenge of the economy is not over for Ramaphosa and I think it will get worse for him um, and his administration to deal with uh, in the coming year. The most challenging thing for Sir Ramaphosa this year has been the economy. The fact that South Africa faced a technical recession in the second quarter, the fact that jobs are down quarter on quarter, the fact that uh, the, there's been a growing rise of the cost of living, fuel prices are up, people are feeling the pinch and at the same time the fiscus can't manage anymore. The fact that Ramaphosa retained Batabile Lamini in his executive, despite the fact that she lied to court under oath um, and is being investigated for perjury, um, was something that Ramaphosa was really criticized about. Um, how he dealt with the Malusi Gigaba issue. Malusi Gigaba was found by the courts um, in April this year to have lied under oath. And it was only, you know, towards the end of the year that, that Malusi Gigaba was forced to uh, tender his resignation from cabinet. Overall, there was a general sense of ramaphoria that existed um, for the early part of this year, but I think people started becoming a bit impatient with Ramaphosa and felt that he wasn't dealing with issues as decisively as he promised to. Now, 2019 obviously will be the litmus test for Ramaphosa. He's going into election. He obviously wants a mandate from the people behind his leadership, and so he would want to do things a bit differently and, and show the people that he really can take action even when it's unpopular within the ruling ANC.